Second. Okay. Second. <coughs> All right, first. Um, discuss and vote 48 Townway Extension, Gollum 2012 Board of Health Septic System Violation of Title V, 310 CMR 15.3019. All systems shall be inspected by the owner or operator there of is ordered to do so by local improvement authority, the department, or court. So, so I'm going to start real quick. This is okay. the Slocums and their attorney, Jeff, and I forgot your last name. Delisi. Delisi, and they're here Delisi Harris. to, he represents the Slocums. This was an order to have a Title V inspection done back in 2012 or 2013 under Jennifer Sullivan, I believe. So that's the background of it. I'm going to recuse myself. I have relatives that live right next door. My grandmother's house is right okay. next door to the Slocum. They've been there forever. So I'm going to just let Joan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think I gave you the list of things that we had in the file. So this was all triggered because the, um, the current, uh, I think they're the heirs of the current, uh, of the old owner. Um, uh, was issued an order in January 18, 2012 by Jennifer Sullivan, who's the um, previous um, health agent, to, for them to do a Title V um, uh, inspection report on their system. So the people next door also ordered to do that. They followed through with that. They currently now have tight So, um, So as you can see, the letters back and forth to the owner the owner didn't think it was a um, uh, failure, so he didn't do a Title V inspection. Um, we weren't really saying it was a failure, we just wanted a Title V inspection done, but he refused to do it. Um, was this so, you think, to a big storm or something? Um, she said it was because they were having beach prob problems with the beach results, so um, that's what it says in her letter anyway. Because of that, she, they wanted, she wanted that done. Okay. So, um, moving forward, it went back and forth. We got a letter from DEP because we got a complaint. Jennifer Sullivan got a complaint in the April of 2012. Um, uh, so, Jennifer Sullivan reissued orders to the owner and they still didn't comply. Um, there was a letter um, in March of um, 2012, in May of 2012, April. So, then finally, in April, 30th on 2013, a letter from Jennifer Sullivan went to the owner saying that there was going to be a hearing on May 6th um, for um, condemnation on the house. And on May 6th, the, the owner agreed um, that he wouldn't occupy the house until a septic system was put into place. It actually wasn't notarized for a few years after that, but we do have a notarized letter from the um, owner who has recently passed away and his wife. So the heirs now are trying to take um, the front half of the house and move it behind them to um, a hole in the back that got destroyed. And then they want to leave the back half of the front house there. Um, and we had a um, we had a septic system plan in place. But because we have this violation, we're bringing it to you to get this cleared up for the front of the house. The, the house the Before front. they move. Right. So the only, the person in the front is going to own the house in the back. So, they so they're the raising system. one. To right, and they're going to put a septic system in the back of that. So we just want to get the front house cleared up with this, with both of these violations. With the violations. So the front house is getting raised. No, that, no, no, it's remaining. A portion is being removed. Portion. The back part, they're keeping. Gotcha. So we just need to get this cleared up so that we can move forward with the plans for the front, the plans for the back. Okay. So what we're looking for is a Title Five inspection report to be done if it is in failure. Um, we get, um, we, we want to know where the system is, we want it on the new plan, if in fact they're going to put a tank tank in there, we want, we want to know where the system is currently, um, and that we want that put in for the house that's currently there, because that's what the order was. So if it's in failure, we want the tank, if they're going to put a tank tank in, that's what they have to put in there, then we want to follow through with the order. We've got a past history to clean up and then right. move forward right. to see everything. Right. Exactly. Okay. It's not that we, you know, we want them to fix it, right. it is a failure, so. But 
But um, the other question we had was there is a no occupancy order. We asked the engineer if the house had been occupied since 2012. We don't know if, that, if there has been anybody in the house since 2012, so maybe they could answer that for you. Is it a cottage or a, or a year round house? Um, we have pictures. Yeah. I can send you that. It is a, it's considered seasonal with the um, assessor's office, and um, I believe it's a um, two bedroom. So they want this one. They're going to front half. But yeah, they want, they're going to keep yeah, this. Exactly. Okay. And they've is already it, gone to zoning and zoning is, is the, already. What's this behind that one? It looks like it's three in a row, or these sideways. Is that another house? Yeah, no, that, that's no, not part no, of that. No, that's one. another house on the on the, on the, uh, the other side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just so you know, uh, Jeff Luisi, Orange Luisi, Harris, is that the, <coughs> the house at 48 Townway Extension, which is what we're talking about mm -hmm. tonight is actually uh, two cottages, two separate cottages that are joined by a uh, covered porch. And there was, um, the, there was the, the, houses, the houses were damaged in the blizzard of 78 and um, rebuilt after a court ordered that they could be rebuilt um, in, the, in the 1980s. And so, uh, but the actual, you know, all of this, uh, the occupancy of those of those cottages pre pre exist the, the adoption of Title Five, and so um, Joan did a good job summarizing a bit of the history with Jennifer. But from our perspective, we're, we we actually are are actually compliant with Jennifer's order from 2012. Um, Jennifer initially sent a letter, and I. Did the board receive my letter, my correspondence to the board? Mm -hmm. I sent it. Okay. So Jennifer actually sent correspondence in January 2012 um, requesting the Title V or ordering the Title V test. And then um, in later uh, that year, um, in May of 2012, she modified her order. She said either have it inspected or submit a proposed system repair. And so what is before, what we filed after, so in, after Mr. Slocum has passed away, um, his children have come to me with this plan, which is kind of a managed retreat situation by, by moving a portion of the building off of this particular lot to another lot further from the ocean. Um, the plan, so we actually received zoning approval in September, and, uh, I'm sorry, in October, and we filed our Board of Health applications on November 8th um, for a tight tank on 48 Townway Extension, uh, presuming that the property is in failure, uh, and then also for an upgrade of the system at 48 or 47 Townway Extension. So we've we filed both of those applications, which is what uh, I read from Jennifer's order that uh, she she. Uh, desired to have happen and after the notarized letter was provided to her that we would not occupy the property and it hasn't been occupied since um, then um, that after that notarized letter was provided the matter was resolved and Jennifer didn't you know she didn't retire for for a couple of years after then so she so um, so you're saying as long as the property wasn't occupied, then you would settle everything. It was right, yeah. right, and, she, and, yeah. and the outstanding order at that time was, was again, was in May of 2012. Either have it inspected or submit a proposed septic repair, which is what was submitted to this to this board in November. And now here we are. November of 2019. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the same page. Yeah. Right? So yeah. here we are. Well after the expiration of 45 days, um, this situation is now a time crunch for our clients because we have a contract to buy the property at 47 Townway Extension um, that's all contingent upon this permitting. 
And the application for 47 Townway extension, which was also filed with this board, also hasn't been considered. And that property had nothing to do with any of this. So what I'm asking is for the board to kind of clear up the past history, which is recognize Jennifer's subsequent order um, of, of, May, of May of 2012, when she said either have it inspected or uh, submit the proposed system repair, that we've done that now, and we would like to proceed forward instead of having kind of this, you know, there, there, there would be, in our estimation, Morse Engineering and Jeff can explain what they've done, but they've located, they've located the system, uh, and it's filled with sand. Um, it would be uneconomical to pump the system from the pump the sand from the system to inspect it, just to find out what we already know, which is some failure. And we're proposing an environmental upgrade in any event in the form of a tight tank. So we would just like to just move forward. There's no reason. There's no good reason at this juncture for Title Five tests whatsoever. Um, no, I agree, because you basically yeah. you, you could put it in writing that we understand it's failed. There is no reason. I've been down that road right. before, too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no problem there, because you're going straight, instead of having an inspector, go straight to design. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. that save yourself the money and the, and the headache. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so if, you, if, if, uh, if the board is interested in knowing, you know, any details about what Morris Engineering has uncovered with the existing system, which I think at this juncture is irrelevant in any event, um, Jeff would be happy to explain it to you, I'm sure. You want to talk about the letter? May I dive on it? Okay, so the letter says that this is your final opportunity to comply by the authority of 310 CMR 15 point three zero one nine. You were ordered to have a Title five inspection done of the sewage disposal system at 48 Town Extension within 30 days of the receipt of this notice, or you may submit a proposed septic system repair for this system by the same date. So by the same date means within 30 days. But we're going way back, right? 2012. Right, 2012. But, but, he's, but he's saying it, it ended, and it didn't really end. She was waiting 30 days to get either a Title five inspection or a plan. Or a plan yeah. Put. But they vacated the house, I mean. That to me is the most important thing. Um, you right. Th there's a paper argument there, which. So nobody's been in the house at all during any summer or seasonal. No, the, they've all. gone over to the, the house weekend, and sat on the during patio the during the daytime and summertime. They haven't, you know, used the. Toilet. No one's no one's living there. That's correct. But not here. and that's the most important thing. And yeah. I hope everybody understands that. We're not. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's public pollution. It's. The health that's why we're here it's it, and that that's a biggie and, and yeah. you know as long as to me the paper trail is one thing and we all have to conform to that we do but the more important thing it wasn't used and we weren't polluting a especially a public beach where i see that that's you know that's yeah. used a lot yeah yeah that that that's exactly so i mean i'd rather move forward than than okay. to yeah. dwell on the past but we and, do so we do need the location of the current system on the plan on the, on the new plan, we'd like to know where it is. Sure. So that needs to be identified by the engineer. I can answer that. Yeah. This is, uh, this is another picture of the house. It shows it a little more clearly. These are the two cottages connected by the porch that Chef Lisa mentioned. Yeah. And the front portion closer to the water is the portion that's going to be moved back to the property behind it where there is um, an existing home that's been, um, hasn't been occupied. It was damaged too severely a few years ago. But we did find the leaching pit. We dug it up, and it's right here. And um, and that's the part that's staying. That's the part that's staying. And then what's you, in the back part? Do you know? What, what's, is there, what's in the back part? Is there? Is, is that bedrooms, room kitchen? Or? Oh, I haven't been in it. Oh, okay. Um, but we we dug that up by hand. We found that it was full of sand. It's a four foot diameter concrete leaching pit. Um, so to actually do a full inspection, we have to bring in an excavator, clean it out, figure out how deep it is. Um, and regardless, I don't think it'll pass. But right. even if it did, they want to replace it. And it's not something that conservation would want to see done either, if it's not necessary to do that. Just yeah, no, I, I, right. I think it's a waste yeah. of effort myself. If yeah. you become saying that it's failed, it's failed. Yeah. But, but yeah. I'm going to argue with you. So yeah, I, I, I don't show all my plan because yeah. we had it located when I originally filed that plan. 
So I can get a revised plan and show them the location. Okay. So when they detach and move the other one to the back, this one is going to become a cottage? Like remodel it and do that? Or no, is it going to be... It's not going to be remodeled, it'll stay in place. It is, again, if they're two separate cottages that are joined by a porch. Right. So one cottage will remain. The back white one, I'm assuming, like the right. shed in the front The one. westerly yeah. most. Yeah. So we'd also need a floor plan for the back, what it looks like. Yeah, so it's currently a two bedroom today. So it would, it would have to remain days. a two bedroom. Right. Yeah. Right. All the type type would have to be one three bedroom. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Three bedroom minimum, right. Title Five. Right. And it's it's always been a seasonal <coughs> place. So it's listed seasonal. Right. Yeah. Is the intention to, to turn this into a year round home? Is it mm -hmm. No. Just stay no. Yeah. Th that's a positive one because that, that yeah. could be a, a, a point of um, dissension. Yeah. And I have no problem. We've had a couple of these situations that you need coastal yeah. town right. and right. there's properties like this that, you know, we want to do the right thing for the homeowner, but environmentally and health wise, there's certain things that, you know, just it, it makes it tough. It makes it tough. But if it's staying in a, um, a summer cottage, then uh, again, there's no argument there. It always has been a summer cottage. Right. We don't want to take that from you. I, at least I don't. Speak right. for myself. Yeah. Is there anyone else on here for, about this property or anyone else, right? Okay. Um, um, there is, but I think but we'll you might want to change something. Yeah, I think Pumps are fetching so uh, tonight you're asking for um, like a continuation of upgrade to the plans to show some stuff that are on it and then submit well, the plans. Well, tonight was a hearing that you guys noticed. It, we're not asking for anything. I'm not sure you even need to vote. I don't, I don't think so. No, right. I, I, um, yeah. I, I think yeah, I think we're just asking for the, for the order for the board to. We just needed to move forward with your recommendation. So that we can move forward with what they're doing. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, to me, I don't think there is. I, I think the past is the past. I just right. let, let it go. As long as we're going forward, we're going we get forward. the plans, we get the... Yeah, the, the house is unoccupied, it's a failed Title V, there's no one been in it, so we're not using the Title V system that's failed, and move forward with a new plan and submit that to the board. And, with the um, change. Yeah, that's with the changes and whatever mm -hmm. um, Jones talked about or asked for. It, was there any question you have going forward? Um, no, I don't think so. The system that we designed for this house yeah. is um, it's a tight tank. Yeah. It's a 2,000 gallon monolithic, so it's watertight tank with uh, bolt down covers. Yeah. It's the exact same system that the property immediately next door has that they put in a few years ago, the same distance away from the water. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, it was a win-win because uh, <coughs> I, this is one of those ones you go down the storm. I'm sorry to say it, but it's like right. you're, you're waiting for it to fall into the ocean. And, right. I, I don't think Situate needs that in the news that a, a house has gone into the water. It just, it's not, um, you're doing the right thing. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, but the land is disappearing. So, no, I, it <laughs> seems like a win-win to me all around. Yeah. It's just my question, my only question would be procedure. Um, the applications have been pending for a while. I'm not sure if the board, maybe I'm getting direction from Joan on this. I'm not sure if the board has to actually vote to approve the plan or if it's just approvable. If it well, we haven't. You know, if it doesn't have to come to the for any kind of variances or upgrades, then we we, we would approve it. And so, since we have it, we just need to get the we need okay. to get the revision, and then we'll look at that, um, and then we'll come back and move forward with the back. Yeah, so we get counts on how many Unless variances the there are that comes before the board. I think, so only, I think the that. only question I have is the one in the back. Or, um, uh, I didn't see any talks for the one in the back, so. I didn't know if any parks were done for the one in the back. Yes, we did. Okay. Yeah, sure All right. So we just need those. So the front, <clears throat> the front house, the westerly one, there are two local upgrades. One is for a reduction in the setback to the property line, but the property line is a right of way. So I don't think we, know, I don't know if that needs to come from the board. And then the other one is a setback reduction so. from the tank to the water line, and the water line will be sleeped. 
So we don't approve the septic plants until conservation does. So I don't know where they're going there. Well, they're actually telling us to reverse. So they're telling us that they so want to So I will approve. tell Amy so you when we're finished with that. Yep. So I don't know when you're going. You just have to let me know when you're going because then we'll make sure the review is finished by the time you go. And then we usually let her know, like we'll let her know if it's okay. But then we don't we don't issue our permit until she's issued your orders. If she, if you have any. I don't know. So it's just a. <laughs> well, just it's a, one of those tricky yeah, things yeah. where uh, one board might say it'll be uh, approved by us pending. But that's what she's saying. That's saying the exact same thing. Right, but yeah. she wants to know from us that she wants to know from us that it's okay, and then when you go to conservation, she'll place her orders. And then she tells us. That yeah, just keep moving place. forward with both boards. Yeah, one's and she just tells us the orders are in place. We can issue the permit. Okay, so so, yeah. so she's waiting for you to report that it's approvable. Right, unless you have other things you have okay. to give to her. I don't know what else that they're requesting. Yeah, so. yeah they've so, so, we, so we just yeah. continue yeah. that yeah. hearing until I, I want to say the first week in March. Okay, so great. Yeah. Once yeah. we get them right away. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Were, were we already have farms in town and 
and so we didn't know the reasoning for this. Um, and if um, does this mean the, far the farmers have um, different rights than um, and they have new rights, or do they have any rights? What, what are their rights? We're not really sure what those are. And we currently have a bylaw in town as, as the Board of Health for nuisance and odor and noise at, at their, um, that is a bylaw that's in place. So if you have a farm, does that eliminate that? And can it, because we already have a bylaw in place for that. Our other question, too, is um, if people are in small lots, 5,000 square lots, does this give them the right to <coughs> you know, have a cornfield on their 5,000 square lot with their neighbor? You know what I mean? It's just, I think the right to farm is really intended for um, you know, the commercial people that are doing dairy and apples and corn and um, um, those type of things that, would, that have big farms in Massachusetts and cranberries and to protect them um, and, and that makes sense. That makes sense. I, so I just my question is I, I think our question is just we're not sure. We already have farms. I see what you're saying. If, if you had a yeah, cranberry bog and you had machinery running and a subdivision went in next door and those people start complaining about the cranberry bog because they're up at four in the morning and they're working and they're doing what they've done for a hundred years would be right to farm. I get that. Yeah. And I understand. Right. Yeah. Has there been a problem in situ? No, we've never no, had it. Well, no. I don't know if like, well, you know, maybe we might get a neighbor complaint. So that, that's what we're not sure. Yeah. If it's a neighbor that calls us to complain, what does the board of health do? Right. What do we do? Right. So um, that's our question. That's just our question. I think so. what it what it so. means is that the existing farms that yeah, that operate in the, the town, which aren't many. Mm -hmm. um, there's Ron Simons, there's Treeberry. Yeah. I have a little two acre orchard where I grow Asian pears off of Tilden Road. Yeah. And uh, it's part of the old Tilden property, it was the original uh, Tilden, which we purchased in uh, 85. And about 20 years ago, I started planting the trees. Well, uh, the old uh, uh, Sam Tilden's property and the brother next to it, that whole Open Fields was a, the oldest continuously operated farm in the country. It was all that, all the land was purchased by Chief Tecumseh, back in whatever. And it was owned and operated for four, over 400 years. The Tildens raised uh, uh, huge rhubarb crops there and took them into Boston via uh, horse and wagon and that sort of thing. So those open fields now have given way to like 26 houses. So I have a lot of houses on the, on the one side, and people who have houses typically don't like to hear noises necessarily or smells uh, that, that can become a problem. This bylaw doesn't push us over and say we have all unlimited rights, but it gives us an identity as a, as a, as a farming group. That's sort of like Farm Bureau, that it, 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 you could call it. Something like that. If you notice that you drive into the town of Norwell, it'll say under the sign, Right to Farm Community. Marshfield is that way. Carver. There's more than 140 communities and towns in Massachusetts that have adopted this bylaw. So it's not anything out of the way. We're not, we're not asking for anything different. It is an interesting question you would have, and we all have. It's just something that is a good thing to have that gives a little bit of sense that who we are, it defines, on the second sheet, it defines farming and the, the actions therein. Uh, you might have, um, group, uh, uh, let's say the Conservation Commission might tell the farmer that he can operate uh, his farm, say, from dawn to dusk, and all of that changes, of course, with the preceding seasons as it goes along. But that gives some parameters to the operation of the farm, but as I as I heard it said, that uh, farming is not pretty necessarily. There are times when it's noisy, when it's smelly, but the result is farm-grown fresh produce that people want in a movement today. Uh, and uh, if we have another bumper sticker that says "No farms, no food," it's also been said that if from between now and 2050. The world needs to double its population and, or its production of food, uh, food production. 
So that's kind of heavy. It's not that Citroen's going to do that, but rather than succumb to a, another 10 lots, etc., the town also has the joys, the open space that a farm field presents to the community. There's not many, much of that. There's more in Norwell and other, mm -hmm. other towns. So it's, we love to that's, mm -hmm. that's basically, you know, we, we, do the, we do supply the town with blueberries, Christmas trees, Asian pears, leafy uh, vegetables, crops, corn, etc., and uh, cranberries is one of the one of the things. I don't know who owns the cranberry logs along now. Um, what, 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 what is that? Okay. 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 Yeah. So there aren't many there aren't many farms. I mean, right. the, the significant. So it's, we're just coming and saying other towns have been doing it close by. It would be positive thing to see the town of Sichuan move in that direction. So I, I do have one question. And I, going back to the Tildens and the farm, and it's been there for 400 years, now there's houses that have been built there. Right. The farm's been there for 400 years. They have more rights than the homeowners, in my that's, that, that's the one right the across from the new right. farm. Right, right. Farm is gone. right. right. It, 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 it's, it's, no, it's no different yeah. than yeah. if you have the granite industry and in Quincy you had in West Quincy there were granite shops that had been in business since the 1800s and that's loud, noisy and residential move in True. and residential asked permission can I move into this industrial area? Industrial still has the top hand on that. Right. So going back to we have farms currently in the town right now does this right to farm. Let's say Mrs. Johnson wants to move to Sichuan and she wants to open and she wants to do chickens. And so that's kind of like a farm, right? Right, right. So right, right. she has 200 chickens on her one acre property. Right. But she's never taking, she never cleans up the cages, she never picks up. It, there's a, a, a stench from odors. You know, she has a couple of cows that she never picks up the manure, it just lies all over the place. Does this right to farm allow us, does it, does it still allow us to use, you know, Chapter 111, Section 125A to go down and say, Mrs. Johnson, I know it's a right to farm community, but your farm is a nuisance right now. You're not maintaining it in, in the way that a farm is supposed to be maintained. Do we still have the authority to go down there and cite her for that? For from a point I would think of health, that any runoff that might be occurring from the property, if it's kept in the property, is one thing. But if it's starting to run off and, and a surface runoff or subsurface runoff, it becomes a problem for a neighbor. Then it becomes something in your your section that you would you would uh, identify with. So what about an odor then instead yeah. of a runoff? Order health is also used. We're odors too. What about it's an odor? Animals, animals, animals is probably an odor yeah. there. It's also the odor and noise. Right, right, right. Yeah. It, it, it comes, goes back to, I don't, didn't have a page along, if you look up, I think it's page 17 of zoning by law, that <clears throat> there, you might have be able to do a chicken farm in R1, 2, 3, 4 or so. But and it, it yeah. could be could be also allowed in the other the, the uh, what is it called the small village mm -hmm. and local village. Yeah. You couldn't do say you, you could you wouldn't be able to do say a piggery or something. I don't hate that term, <clears throat> but you couldn't do that. You would have to if you were going before the board to to set up like want to set up a, a chicken ranch or something. You would have to meet the the standards of the the setbacks and, and, and we know uh, that we already have some really good bylaws I think for farmers I mean right I, I think we are I think they're pretty good our question is <clears throat> what do we do if it becomes a nuisance to the neighbors so because that's a board health thing so that's I, our I think, that's our I think, question I think you would supersede yeah. that and, yeah and I, I was going to say most uh, bylaws that are uh, state you have to abide by the state but we can modify them to the town but the things yeah. that we're looking at, it pretty much says that they bypass all of that. So it kind of conflicts what we already have for uh, us, bylaws yeah. in situate. Yeah. So, this is, you know, we have, we have, yeah, so some of the, so we have, we, you know, there's, um, 
you know, odor and pollutant time, you know, you can't have any noise and so we have those already in place. So is it gonna is this gonna conflict? you know, with those that are already in place. That, that's just our question. Right, no, I get it. I, I, I hate to say it, but my mind thought, as you're saying that, goes to somebody with a bad intention of doing something spiteful. Yeah. You mean a farm? I think we already have a farm. Yeah. Yeah. Farm. Oh, two neighbors, and yeah. somebody says, you know what, I'm going to... You always got to put some chickens and put them over in the back corner yeah. of the house so they, that rooster gets up every morning and wakes up my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, just, to be a, just to be a, uh, you know, spiteful. Yeah. I would think that common sense would be um, important in that. You know, if you've got, if you're stupid enough to try to run 200 chickens in a small lot, you know, that's not right. And even though most of the farm laws won't let you do that. But if somebody's going to have, um, <coughs> um, 10 chickens, 20 chickens, or a pig, and the neighbors calls up and says, hey, the pig's making too much racket. Hey, the pig is a pig. They make racket. Um, something, I think common sense would be the best answer for that. Um, and what Jerry said, if the runoff is a health issue, then it's definitely the town has the right to go in and say, hey, you're taking a health, health issue here. Right, the health would supersede everything. Yes. Right. Absolutely, right. no question about so, it. I just more worry about that spite thing. Like, I don't the noise so thing. I, yeah. think, I think what some towns have done is, like, I think this might be a little bit too premature, like some towns have put an agricultural commission together to address all of those issues. <coughs> so they put the agricultural commission together. And then they go to the right to farm because they already have like things well, in place. They have, you know, they have, you know, whatever the commission does, rules, regs, whatever. And so I think it addresses a lot of those concerns on the right to farm. Sense. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good That's, idea. I think it I, just. I love like, the idea of it. It's it, just. I it's think it's maybe the the way to go is to ask the selectmen for an agricultural commission first to address right. that, and then move to the right to farm because we don't in the board of health. I'm just saying in the board of health we. <laughs> You know, we're just going by nuisance and odor, but the agricultural commission might be able to set up some, you know, guidelines for the for the farms and what they're doing, and then and then right. we can work off of the agricultural commission for the right to farm. Right? So and whether I don't, I mean, I commend you. I I, I, I like the idea, but I think right. for us in in a half hour to say yes or no, I don't think would be right. And I'm definitely not saying no, and I'm I'm not going to say yes either. But I, I agree. There's there's more to it than just allowing mm -hmm. it because especially where too I don't see anything broken it's not like mm -hmm. somebody's trying to push a farm out right or yeah, there's complaints not yet, not yet. No. well but, you know, we're looking what, into the future what but, I'm thinking yeah. in the future is um, we do have some still have some large lots of property in town not as many as we did but there are still some and if there's something in place so that the homeowner who's got seven or eight acres of land can tell a prospective person who wants to buy the house and farm those acres of land that the town is pro-agriculture. There's enough problems with agriculture in this country right now. We've seen so many places, yeah, Tilden, those places that Sitch would produce a hell of a lot of food when my dad was a kid in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Sitch would hardly produce any food now. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree with you. So if you've got something in place right, right. to make people think that this could be, well, yeah, I could raise my strawberries here because the neighbors aren't going to yell at me if I start irrigating at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. They can't yell at me if I do that. Something Betsy, like that. You, you just said common sense. That wouldn't be and, common and sense. And that wouldn't all. be common sense no. to be irrigating at 2 a.m. No, but you just not. said they'd, have, they'd be able to do it. But, but, but no, I, I, I shouldn't have said it's okay, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. So. It's just another uh, um, way of helping people trying to figure out the farm. Yeah. More and more young people want to farm. The problem is finding places for them to farm. And so places that are, seem to be pro-agriculture could help. 
Um, so, and I'm, so another question, because we do get people that call our department for people that are um, not following the water ban in the summer. Mm -hmm. We usually direct them to the water department. Mm -hmm. um, but would you be following the water ban as well, or is I, that, that, that is something that? the town has to come so, up with because um, so that's part yeah. of the whole agriculture yes. commission. Oh, yeah. I, I, would, I would answer that you would, you would yeah. have to follow along the lines of, of operating a business, a restaurant. You know, still uses water in a water ban. And if the business is a business, mm -hmm. if a farm needs and requires water, to to the bottom line is, what's what's your your uh, business plan? The business plan is that the pears don't shrivel up and have nothing uh, for that for the year. So you have to. You have, there's a lot of common sense that, and unfortunately, common sense is a short <laughs> supply today. And we're not we're not asking you to make a uh, decision here tonight. And it's something that, that both of the other boards will take up, pick up, and, and, and take that up before the town meeting. So there's plenty of time for that. <clears throat> I see your point. Uh, there's, it's been it's a good point about the agriculture mm -hmm. commission, mm -hmm. but it's also been discussed by uh, some some people we've we spoken that <clears throat> it comes down to okay another commission, another mm -hmm. group, know, but and finding people in, in town mm -hmm. to willing to give. Your time to another to a commission is becoming more and more difficult. It is. I mean, we're yeah, so yeah. grateful for the board yeah, that we yeah, have. They're all volunteers. They're all volunteers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And it's and just that we. I've we, known. I've seen your face for a long time. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's just if we had a commission, <clears throat> we'd have some go-to. We'd have yeah, some kind of. True. We'd have some kind of you know regs or something. Yes. Yes. Um, whatever the commission you know. We could go to them if we had an issue or yeah. whatever, and they could discuss it. It's well, just, there is one bylaw we have come across that did have, like referring to an agriculture commission. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I don't believe we, the one here that's, that's, that's registered by the town clerk and will go to town floor, does not discuss a, a, an agriculture commission. Right, right. Uh, it simply talks about the farming shall encompass activities and, and the, 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 the definition of farming. Again, or agriculture is, mm -hmm. is defined there in literal uh, bullet points. How long does it take to put a commission together? Well, well first of all, you have to ask the selectmen. Yeah, yeah, the selectmen yeah. really make that decision. Right. On it's a process. So this might be on the back burner for a little while. Yeah, I mean, they, <coughs> they make the process and then right. people they, they apply decide. into yeah. it. Right. How, many, decide on how, it how many people or so whatever. I mean, that's a good thing. It's valid. It's, it's awesome. It's just, it's a lot to. Yeah. So it's a lot to put together in a, in a couple of weeks before this time meeting. Okay. Yeah, and you mean, might yeah. say that as pull the reins back right, right. and look at it in, in 2021 Absolutely. with some more homework done. Because, I mean, I think if it's put together right, and I knew, I hate to say it, but if I knew from an attorney standpoint to say this works, this works, and they both work together, then I'd say, yeah, this is yeah. great. This is awesome. It's another tool, as you said, maybe to preserve some land, maybe to have some wooded lot turned back into a farm or... Mm -hmm or something, and, and, and then it gives uh, protection with the neighbors that possibly might be there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a positive. I just don't want to uh, supersede something we already have and then create a problem when there wasn't even a problem to begin with. <laughs> yeah. right. I actually got a letter one time from the Board of Health telling me I had to cease and desist from the burning of poison ivy. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. who in their right mind wants to burn poison ivy? Evidently, somebody went by one time when we were burning, and they swore they got poison ivy from the smoke. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so we got a letter saying, I'm like, huh? I don't want to burn poison ivy. I never burn poison ivy. Yeah, you'd get it yourself, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's the only thing I've had over all these years. The farm and I'm sure in burning, you know, and I don't... It, but, yeah, yeah, who knows what the complaint was, and I'm sure a little poison ivy gets mixed in by accident. It's just part of what it was. Yeah, because it's the roots, too, and a lot of people don't. If they don't see the leaves, yeah, right. The but, um, I just cleared some uh, the roots are not going to be there. Getting off track here, I just took some lobster traps off my back fence, and as I'm carrying them to the truck, I looked at them. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, I could see it. I said, so oh, boy. I'm just waiting for it to, uh, to pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I, and, and however that letter came, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure some, like you said, some neighbor went yeah. by and somebody, somebody was saying, no, they, they weren't in the bushes. It must be from them. That smoke. I, yeah. I got you. I got you. But so, um, if um, all right. So who takes it to? 
who asks the selectmen? Do we no. ask the selectmen? Yes. yes. You guys, I, I, I love volunteer enough. people, but you guys are almost the first commission. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know what it is? It's, <laughs> and you got some signatures here. Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell you. You know what it is? It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a special interest group. I mean, you know, who's, who's going to volunteer for it? It's, it's, it's going to be the farmer. People you know, that care about it. That care about the farming. Well, the good thing is there's a lot of towns that already have a commission in place. Yeah. So, so you can, can follow so suit. Go to Marshall and say, how do we, um, uh, whatever they're, yeah, how whatever do they're do doing. Yeah. Follow their. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right, exactly. Just, no, get the blueprint. Mm -hmm. It's just right. It's just. And it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and like it, like you said, I mean, it doesn't have to be you three or whatever, but I'm you do just have. Wife, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you cut off the dinner? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just tell you, you're in it now. <laughs> But I mean, and you know, when people get it, when they do, I mean, same thing like how we went about it is they ask for people to volunteer and, hey, you know, that's something I like, Board of Health, I'm in the business or whatever, that's how you get these people. And yeah. Yeah. these 26 signatures or more, <laughs> those are pending people. Hey, you yeah. signed this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But... Well, I, I, so, I, I, see what you decide. I would, I would think my sense would be we can commiserate on this afterwards, but you know, probably still looking for some heads up decisions or sense from various boards, and we'll probably certainly get that. Yeah, I'm sure. Like I say, as long as things don't um, intertwine in a negative way, I have no problem with it. And my suggestion would be to look at the surrounding communities. Cohasset, uh, Norwell, Marshfield. I don't think Cohasset has one, but Mar mm -hmm. Norwell, 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 Marshfield. Norwell, Marshfield. Norwell, Marshfield, Norwell, Marshfield, 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 Marshfield,
and they moved to this quaint fishing village called Situate, and they complain about the fishermen and the order of his traps. And the traps are, uh, are stacked in the backyard. I've yeah. been doing this for the last yeah. 40 years. Yeah, right. Exactly. No, why is this exactly. any different? So well, you, new development. So you've come up pretty good. Uh, Not through the Board of Health, but I've heard it in discussion on yeah. the street and yeah. people saying it. You have to kind of laugh because, I mean, I've, I've been in town, you know, by, my entire existence, so you, you hear those things as, as we grow. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, some it, of it's sad, it is. It happens, happens everywhere. I mean, yeah. I, have, yeah. I have a convenience store I used to watch in Boston, and the neighbors upstairs, it's open 24 hours for years, and now they want it closed. They want it from 7 in the morning to 5 at night. And, you know, we moved in here. Well, you moved in here knowing this store was yeah. here, but that's, yeah. I said, that's like me. I lived in the city right next to a fire department. Think I'd go to the mayor and say, close that fire department? Yeah. Like, I don't like the sounds at 2 o'clock. We can't have emergency. No fires between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. It, it, sounds, it sounds, you know, we all have, we all desire rights. Uh, I was down at uh, uh, O'Brien's repair the other last week. And he has a sign in the window, right to repair. Everyone wants a right to store. Right to farm, right to fish. <laughs> you know, so you could have that little entrance to Situate with a bunch of little yeah. signs below. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we're the last people on your list. Right? So, no, no, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, this is. I know you can keep that yeah, right for us. You can do it. No, we're going to be out of here. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you so much for coming. All right, good luck. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, Did you have the farm on Tilden Road by yeah, when they're building the new development? No, 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 no. no, no. We're before that. Before the, all You know where Shadlow is? Yeah. Cross the street of Shadlow's. Cat Corner. Yeah. Down there, down there. And, oh, okay. and that, that parcel of maybe 12 acres, I think, was was a late pond of the United States, early Sam Tilden's. Mm -hmm. Sam Tilden's. Yeah, because yeah, I grew up on Marion Road. Yeah. Oh, really? So I, so I knew How I'm, do you I'm, know the area? Yeah. yeah. We came across the, the property in 85, and we found a yeah. house yeah. with yeah. a lot of six and a half acres, but a good four of it is, is wetland. So, I mean, but it's right. the majority of everything else is like half an acre or an acre there. So, it's the new folks that have moved in up above that, that, that they, oh you know, gosh. everyone so wants them. everyone wants a cute wow. little mini mansion or whatever in Situate, and they want to sit in their air conditioned, you know, place <laughs> and have the lawn cut for them and really not walk out. And if they do walk out, and they hear noise, they can't, they can't understand that. So thank you very much. Have a good day, y'all. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Okay, discuss and vote homeowners application number five for community septic management program CSMP septic abetment three installers ports. So we um, have so at the last meeting you approved a couple of meetings ago you approved um, this betterment for twenty five thousand. So he's gotten three quotes. Um, one was for twenty seven nine hundred. One was for um, 35, I think it was 35. Um, and the other one, yeah, 36,530. And one was for 30,000. So he wants to go with the 27,900. So you have to approve the additional funds from the 25. So if you could just make it 28,000 total for this payment. Because okay. DEP says we have to approve up to 25, and then you have to approve if anything is over 25. Now, do you guys review those to make sure that they're we do, we they're going to have a complete job that's settled for compliance? No, they yeah. already have a plan in place. So we've, that we've done. Um, they already have a plan, and it, we've already approved it. So we match these against the plan to make sure they're doing everything. Yeah. And if we have, a, we want to. I'm just trying to think of we can cut corners for yeah. a price difference of that. And my thing is, is topsoil and seeding, and that has to be done has for to be done five. Yeah. There. So whatever's on the plan, they have to. Do. And they're paying it all back anyway because it's, it's going right on right. their taxes. It goes right on their taxes. Right, yeah. right. But I just hate to see yeah. somebody. Yeah, this wasn't included, and in the end, there you go. Well, yes. it's not right. compliant now, and we've gone through it. Never really asked that question before, but it's so amazing we're the uh, difference in, in, in prices. But, uh, we're watching that. So yeah. some of these aren't going to. Now you guys are going to become uh, good at knowing what prices are. <laughs> right. Normally you don't. Karen, like some things aren't included, like electrician or the plumber. 
Um, and, you know, we make them aware of that, you know, so you have to go out and get quotes now if you're going to have, but, because if it's not on the plan, then it the installer is not going to include that. Yeah, if you have a pump system, you right. need an electrician. Right. Oh, the yeah. installer is going to say it doesn't include that, you know, so you have to go out now and get those quotes so that if you want to put it's it in the money you have to put it in yeah. Or you pay that without the abandonment. Your choice. So. Right. So, yeah, well, that's a hidden surprise. So, we need to make an amendment. Yes. Make so a you motion. just have to motion, motion to approve number five. Betterment for number five for 28. Okay. Make a motion to approve betterment number five uh, up to $28,000. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Well, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay. Director's report. The director's report. Finally, February 10th, 2020. We have five new septic plans under 45 year review. We have zero plans that are revised under 45 year review. We have 11 sets of plans waiting for engineering revisions. Five sets of plans are awaiting CONCOM review. We have five as built for new private wells that we're still waiting on. 14 as built for septic systems installed that we're waiting on. And we have 17 failed systems currently. That number will change after our first hearing tonight when that process goes through. We, uh, the Board of Health participated in a conference call with the CDC today on the coronavirus. There are 11 confirmed cases in the U.S. in six different states. Any travel is entering the U.S. by plane from China are being diverted to one of 11 airports for screening. If they are showing any signs or symptoms at the screening, they are quarantined for 14 days. If they're not showing any signs or symptoms, they're given a little self-education and self-monitoring uh, training and told to, you know, they can go on their way, but they're told, you know, stay away from people, kind of self-isolate a little bit, especially for 14 days if they're not showing any signs or symptoms. Again, the best practices for prevention for any virus, you know, Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. If you're going to sneeze, elbow sneeze. Um, you know, social distancing is another great way, about six feet away from people when you're out in general public. So that's another great way to, to keep yourself safe. Um, we also have all kinds of information and links on the Board of Health webpage on situatema.gov, right? Mm -hmm. Under the Board of Health, right? Joan put all kinds of stuff up on the webpage for us for there. Um, we had 35 people certified at the anti-choking class that we did at the Bacchus Tavern. I would love to thank Fireman Mark Donovan for his job that he did down there. And I'd also like to thank Bacchus Tavern. It was just great down there. And it's really good seeing all these people down here. And they all, geez, I've witnessed it before. I've done it before. So. It's really good to see people that are interested and actually do it. So that was a really good day for us. Will he do another one? Too. Yes. Coming up. Doesn't make a year. Oh, so it won't be until next year. You you can can yeah, you can ask him if you want to do a private. You know, he has done them like when a new restaurant opens, he'll go in and do them if, they, right. if they're not compliant. So he's really good about that. You can call him mm -hmm. if you need them. Yeah. And uh, we are getting ready to start planning our next serve safe class which will be sometime in April or May, and it will be in the Marine Center. Um, myself and Joe are getting ready to put that together. Um, I also would like to uh, ask the board to allow DJ Wilson from MMA, the Mass Municipal Association, to come before the board to discuss the state regs that are going to become effective this June on the new tobacco regs that went in. Um, it's my understanding that Smoking bars will be allowed in towns, but it's also my understanding that if the Board of Health wants to not allow them, we can put regs in place that doesn't allow them. I'm not sure how the board feels. I'm not a big fan of the smoking bars. I think it's, uh, it's a disadvantage to other businesses. So if I, and I'm not sure how we enforce it either. So come June 1st, I can, Let's say this room is a smoking bar. I can come down here and buy a pack of menthol cigarettes, and I can only smoke them here. But how do I stop the person here leaving with a full pack of menthol cigarettes? It's supposed to be sold and consumed on site. 
So if I buy a pack, do I have to smoke all 20 of them here before I leave? These are questions right. that I hope DJ will be able to answer for. That was never healthy. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh, and then I, I feel, I, I look at the other end of it, and you have, you know, a convenience store that can't sell menthol or anything, but I can just go down to the smoking bar, buy a pack of cigarettes, and smoke one and walk out with 19 in my, and I'm not sure how it works. Right. So I think it would be nice if we had DJ come in and give us a little presentation. I have a call into him. He worked closely with me when I was in Quincy. We did some smoking rigs back in uh, 2003, 2004. He knows his stuff. He's a really great guy, and he loves doing it. So yeah, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to have him come. Yeah. Now, when you say smoking bar, I mean I, I hear bar, and I'm thinking alcohol right off the bat. No alcohol. No. no. Well, yes, you could if you wanted. That's one of the questions. Yeah. And we're going to ask him if they can have food too. So that's another question. We yeah, don't we're know. going back. Yeah. We're going yeah, back. I, to, exactly. Yeah. Loopholes. Yeah. I mean, as I get older and go through life, smoking is just stupid. It, it's basically probably should be outlawed. It doesn't seem like it. The, the benefits outweigh the good. And well, I bet you you're going to see that go down. I mean, you've got the e-cigarettes now. You got the menthols. It's but, a lot easier too big. You know, when I was younger, I says, yeah, I get the no smoking, and I'm thinking of arguments in my head, and, and your attitudes do change as you age. Absolutely. I says, you know, if, if there's a drinking population that smokes, then why can't after a certain hour you, you just allow it? It's, it's, you know, I have certain places that do allow it, and, and I don't know if that's any good either. I know a lot of people that do smoke, and they kind of, they, they don't mind the fact that they got to step outside. You know, it's... it's it's it has, not a bad thing. It has changed a lot in the last 50 years. Yeah. Of but this conversation but no, almost seems not. like it's reverting back to say, oh, it's not so bad anymore. You know? Well, they did take a step and, you know, now you can't implement <coughs> all stuff. That's all out of the convenience stores now. Yeah. It's come June 1st. But now you can have it at a specialty store. At a specialty store. Right. right. We have the authority, I believe, to regulate those specialty stores. So we only we don't have, have one have. store, right? That you know, situate. That's yes. Stuff. Yeah. Stuff. But they, but that's not a smoking bar. That is right. just a yeah. retail, right, establishment. I'm not sure if they wanted to open up a smoking bar. The whole do they have to go before the board of selectmen first? Yeah. Especially if they're going to serve liquor. Obviously, they'd have to if they were going to serve liquor. And that's but even if even if they were going to serve food, they have to. But yeah. these are quite. I I, I did put an email together to Patty Henley, who works for DPH and the Tobacco Control, and she's the one who recommended DJ, so we'll be able to get these answers, and DJ's a, a great resource. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm interested to hear, because you, you say, you know, you, if you allow it, and after a certain hour, to, some bars will say, I don't want it, some will, and then eventually, if they're having more fun at the one that they're smoking, then I want smoking too, and yeah. it's, uh, and a lot of, Private clubs, um, they're allowed to. Well, that's with the vote of the club, and yeah. most clubs, I think, have voted not to. That I'm aware of, yacht clubs in different places, they just don't want it. When and again, it a lot of the members and the senior members smoked, and they said, "No, that's fine. Right. Get it out of here. Let's not have it." When the rates changed in 2002-2003, where the state put statewide regulations in, but they exempted private clubs and boards of health, if they wanted to, could go in and exempt private clubs. Mm. In Quincy, we went and we exempted, we did not exempt private clubs. They had to, main, they could not smoke in there either. Mm. And we did public hearings, and it was done through the board of health, and I was, it was my own discretion at that point, the way that the Quincy is set up. But we had all of the clubs come in, and it was funny. A lot of the bartenders were, you know, it's going to ruin it, blah, 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 blah. And then after the meeting, I really don't want them smoking in there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, yeah, DJ, he's, he's a great resource, so I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, it, it brings up a lot of uh, debates that were out yeah. there that, that I processed. And, and um, you know, it, uh, but I can remember back. Uh, when Citroën went through it with the smoke eaters and mm -hmm. hours and everything else and one guy came in and he said you know it just sucks that 
the town next door will allow smoking and I can't and I'm not on an even playing field. I'm losing my customers yep. to there. I wish the state would just do it all. And they did a year or two later. Yep. And they did. And it put everybody on an even playing field. Now we're going back to the thing where Yeah. So. Just have one thing to add. Um, Eileen, our public health nurse, has sent out the data for our oh, right. clinic. Vans, Billy Gunman at St. Luke's on Tuesday, April 28th from 7.30 to 3.30. So we'll be putting out the public notice. Um, people should um, sign up quick because every year it gets more and more people, which we're really great that we get more and more every year. So she's done a great job with that. We're also getting ready for mosquito season. We had a conversation with Plymouth to, uh, County um, okay. Mosquito, yeah, um, mosquito control. control. And he's going to be having a lot of the Board of Health staff on what they're going to be doing. Um, because we're getting ready for, uh, usually Triple E sticks around for three years, so they've got some plans in place with DPH on how they're going to try to control that this year. Um, so he's going to talk to the Board of Health from the uh, South Shore on uh, what his next plans are. But we do have some tech education on our website and all of that. So, and we're also going to be doing a tech education program class um, as well from the public county on text. So we have some of that coming up too. That's Get ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, you want to add on that one? <laughs> Get ready for the season. Um, all right. Um, administration invoice approval is done. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.